Science. Thank you for joining me today. We have Dr. Satvir Khalsa with us, who is Assistant Professor in the Harvard School of Medicine. And uh, he was just here at the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics talking about the science of yoga and the current state of research of, about yoga. That there's now this evidence about actually changing the structure of the brain was right. really surprising to me. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Sure. Um, well, the public attitude towards this has been, you know, it's a hobby. You know, you know mm -hmm. people do this because they like it. It's like stamp collecting. You know, they, <laughs> these people got into stamp collecting, so that's fine, but it's not for me. And, you know, I don't know what they get out of it, but obviously they like it. But in fact, I mean, these are mind-body practices, and they have real effects on the mind and on the body. When we do the research and we find that indeed, yes, brain structure has changed, yes, indeed, biochemistry of the brain has changed, yes, indeed, your body mass index has been reduced, yes, indeed, your blood glucose levels have dropped, it's really, for those of us who practice yoga, it's like, duh, of course. <laughs> We experience it, obviously there are those changes happening, but from a research perspective in terms of the other scientists in the world and the general public, to actually demonstrate that you can actually see the change and it's real and palpable, somehow kind of, this is not a hobby, it's not a placebo effect, it's real. These people are claiming that they're changed and indeed we can see the changes. There's changes in brain activity, changes in brain structure, changes in brain biochemistry, change in stress hormone levels, and physical changes throughout the body. So it is a real, uh, it is a real phenomenon. When you do practice this yoga um, uh, in the way that you know the classical traditional yoga is practiced for a significant amount of time over a significant period of time, these changes will happen. It's biology. This is not, um, this is not belief based. This is not a placebo effect. This is a biological effect. It's built into our body. When we do these practices, the body and the mind change. That's the way we are as human beings. And regardless of whether you believe the change or don't believe the change, the change will happen simply because it is biologically based. And the, the part of the brain that changes, um, I think one of the sections, of there's specific sections of the brain that were changing, right? Right, exactly. And part of it was um, the decision making and, and choices so that that right. might be part of how, not only the mindfulness then about how you're experiencing food differently, but the people who um, would come to me and say, yeah, I really want to change you. Always, right. always, exactly. I want to change. I, exactly. I don't seem to ever quite be able to pull it together and make right. those changes. This could actually be um, a, a help in making, making other behavior changes in your life by improving that executive function, is that right, or am I getting that wrong? Yeah, I mean, it starts with executive function. The meditative component, the mind-body awareness, the mindfulness component involves recruiting uh, your attention, or controlling your attention. That happens in the frontal cortex. Frontal cortex is your executive brain. That has control and in, in, uh, you know, uh, over other areas of the brain, particularly the emotional brain, the so-called limbic system. And so when you, when you enhance that practice, where you recruit that executive functioning, um, there are changes that take place. And those changes in the brain are changes in the brain that are consistent with what behaviorally people experience with yoga practice. So more mind-body awareness, less emotional reactivity, less stress reactivity, uh, more calmness, more positive emotion, in the sense of feeling more calm, um, a state of equanimity. Uh, there's less reactivity to stress, less reactivity in, in emotional reactivity. Basically, what we call brain plasticity. It's a use it or lose it phenomenon. The more you use something, the bigger that um, area of the brain has devoted to it. So, um, if you're an iron pumper, you you pump iron. I was just iron, thinking that, more just like you your get a big body you get a big space. bicep. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's that's muscle plasticity. It's the same thing with the brain. The more you practice these meditative techniques, the less emotionally reactive you become. So the emotional brain starts to shrink down. So you benefit in that way. And the choices come along with that. So as you become less emotionally reactive, of course, you eat less because you're stressed. Mm -hmm. um, and the more you become mind-body aware, you choose to eat things that you actually feel make you feel better. And, and so it's, it's, it's like you're not eating broccoli anymore because your doctor told you to eat broccoli. You're eating broccoli because suddenly it feels good to you. Um, and that's the very big difference in behavior change. 
uh, because now people will go and have that sugar and say, oh, I, I, it doesn't feel good. And, and suddenly they avoid it, not because they're told to avoid it. It's not a guilt thing. It's not a guilt thing. It's a desire thing. I don't want to eat sugar because it makes me feel like hell. And I want to exercise because when I exercise, I feel better. Um, and so, so there's positive incentive. And so that's behavioral change from the bottom up. And that's different. That's not being imposed upon them. That's coming from the ground up. And so it's a pretty exciting possibility, especially for people who would like to get healthier but seem stuck in a rut. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and it is a rut uh, because most people don't have the skills to be able to cope with stress and strong emotions. It's not something that our culture has built into it as a skill in our school system or in our healthcare system. The purpose of yoga practices are to um, improve the body and the mind so that you can experience in these deeper contemplative states of mind, spirituality if you will. Not religion, but spirituality, the sense of peace and equanimity. Um, and, and, and that brings a lot of uh, a sense of well-being into people's lives. So uh, it sounds like utopia. It sounds like it's too good to be true. Um, but on the other hand, it takes effort. You have to do it. You have to take responsibility. You have to go to the yoga class. You have to sweat. You have to do the exercises. You have to take the time. You have to make the commitment. Um, but fortunately, if there's a payback. It's self-rewarding, because when you go to that yoga class, you walk out saying, oh, geez, I'm glad I made that choice, because I feel so much better right now. Mm. And I was thinking of not coming because I had this and that to do, but now that I've come, man, I I'm so grateful I did. I'm not going to you know, make that decision a problem again in the future. I'm just going to commit to it and come, because I know it's good for me, and it feels good, and I want more of it. Um, and so, so when you get into that mode of really uh, practicing it, it does have those benefits.